Hello there, it's OK Plan B, and today we are back in Kerbal Space Program. And I had the fun idea of trying to make a rocket solely using the Cub uh, Vernia engine, which will be shown on screen in a second. But it's a uh, it's a liquid fuel engine that's meant kind of more as there it is right there. It's meant to be used more on uh, descent and ascent stages for landers. Uh, it has the maximum thrust at atmospheric pressure of 28.9 kilonewtons. So it's it's not it's not a vector engine. It, this this uh, this little guy kind of kind of got not a lot of power. So I thought it was funny just to try to create a big old rocket out of it and get into low carbon orbit. Uh, so here's the rocket right now, as you can see. I tried to save weight, which I think ended up kind of killing me in the long run. Uh, I just used that storage module and a, and a aerodynamic nose cone on the top of it and put two Kerbals in there. I do end up changing that later because I end up having the funny idea to try to do a Gemini style docking mission in Kerbin orbit. Uh, but that's further down and I don't want to spoil all the fun for you. This was me just trying to test if the Cub engines uh, actually have enough pump to try to get anything up. As you can see, I put the two Kerbals in there in just the little seats and they kind of overlap their eyes. And I think the one on the right's kind of cute. Uh, I don't know what it is about it, but I, it, it made me chuckle when I was playing the game. Uh, so I thought I'd share that with you guys. But, uh, as you can see, the Cub engines do have enough to, to get at least this stage here, the final stage, uh, up and relatively high. Obviously, it's not into orbit, but it's fairly close. Uh, I'm using parts clip in here just a little bit to make sense of these, these engines, because obviously they're side mounted and not bottom mounted, so I have to get a little cheeky with my cheat here. Uh, this is the testing of the second stage just to see if, A, if it can lift everything else, and B, uh, if I have the stage incorrect. Uh, this video was kind of just a funny idea I had while I was trying to create another video, uh, similar to my last one, of the uh, speed record, which I absolutely did not anticipate to have three and a half thousand people watch that video. That was a video that I made in maybe two hours tops between actually playing the game and editing and to have so many people not only watch that and subscribe, I'm, I'm very grateful. And 3,000 views, not a ton, but it, it does mean a lot and actually makes me want to make more content like this. So here I am making a dumb little rocket with only Cub engines. Uh, this was me testing the re-entry and the parachutes for this uh, and kind of get an idea of the the, uh, the height that those two stages there could get me. So right here I'm building the first stage, the main uh, main stage to get me out of, well, get me through the atmosphere and as close as I can to actual orbit. I use, I believe it was five rows of the Cub engine kind of clipped in there and that little fairing piece to clean it up a little bit. At this point I was thinking that this looked a lot like a, a Mercury Redstone rocket. Um, and I, I make it look even more like that when I kind of clean it up and add on some some fins and everything. But here we are just kind of testing the whole thing, seeing how far we can get it. Um, I'm not caring too much about my ascent profile right now because this is not the, the final uh, mission. This is more me just making sure everything works. I haven't forgotten anything, staging's good. As you can see, we dropped that first stage, burning through our second stage, getting to a good uh, apoapsis of about 72,000 kilometers, and then we're going to wait to burn to try to circularize. Oh, actually, I believe we are burning right now, yes. Uh, the, the cub engines at very low thrust don't really show any particle effects, which is kind of annoying because I can't always tell uh, if they're burning or not. But uh, here we are to that final stage, the uh, the actual habitated stage, and close to circular circularizing. And there we go. We have a fairly good circular orbit and a decent bit of delta V left. Uh, here I'm just kind of testing everything, making sure that everything can come out. I have those two solar panels on there for uh, energy, and then the communicatron 
communitron? Communicatron. The radio aerial that has just folded out, and then I go on a cheeky little EVA mission, and you guys are going to learn something at the same time that I do right here. Kerbals in storage units like this, their helmets are too big. And this is actual speed. This is me just trying to fight to get... Oh, I'm so close. I'm trying to get him out of the storage unit here just to uh, go on a little EVA, you know, inspect the, the craft to make sure everything is good. And I just have to full send the EVA jetpack to make sure that he can get out. But here we are doing our little inspection around it the final this is kind of like the mark one of it so this is going to be the final look that we get at it and then i find out that luckily you can get just close enough to the seat and hop into it so that makes this a lot easier because i thought i was going to have to try to thread the needle with him to get him back in but as you can see we go ahead click that button and we're right back in there and then up next is going to be me testing this kind of dumb version of a command module and its uh, re-entry capabilities. I do end up changing this over to a Mark 1 command module, which has the built-in uh, monopellant, has built-in electric charge, has built-in reaction wheels, albeit not very strong. Um, but the key thing that it has built in is the ablative surface on the bottom for re-entry. So here we just did our um, decircularization, decircularization, that's the word, burn. Detaching that bottom section of the stage here and then we kind of just let it coast on at... Um, oh, I've completely forgotten words. This direction where the butt is flying forward. Not prograde, anti grade, whatever it is. And uh, parachutes deploy, we make it to the ground safely. Um, nothing special, we've kind of only just touched the surface here. Uh, eventually, we get close to the ground. I, I always hate these, uh, just watching these things slowly come down, but here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, touchdown. And then I have our Kerbinot come back on out and uh, plant a flag for us. I don't keep the flag, but I just thought it was a funny little thing to do. Oh, it looks like it was Valentina. I didn't realize. I guess I've been saying him the whole time. They and or her. But either way, nice little NASA flag out there. But here I am kind of just uh, redoing bits and pieces, like I said, getting rid of that command module setup that I had built and just put it with Mark 1 with um, parachutes on the top. I end up taking off that parachute. I was trying to think of <laughs> what to actually make this video about, and I put a science junior unit on there, but I end up actually taking that off, adding more fuel tanks and RCS thrusters, um, and then make this into a, a Gemini style docking mission. Uh, here we are, just kind of painting everything. Touching it up, there's the RCS uh, tank, the thrusters, and then I'll take that top parachute off and put it on. Yep, there it is, the the docking junior port, junior docking port. That's the word. Uh, I was trying to put a nose cone on it just to protect it, but that's all. It, it just it didn't look good. Um, and then put some of these guys on there, and then yeah, uh, to me this just looks a lot like a, a Mercury Redstone rocket, which I thought was very funny. Uh, because I end up doing Gemini style docking with it. Right here we are on our launch. Uh, I ended up getting some pretty bad pogo when I was launching this rocket the first couple of times, so I added the struts on the top section there to kind of help take care of that. There goes the first stage, we're still blasting through the atmosphere. Um, one little thing, uh, if you plan on trying to do this, is these cub engines are not very heat resistant and if you turn too much it look it, it seems like they kind of run into each other and then heat up ones around it so just be careful because i did run into that issue a couple of times uh but here we are circularization circle ooh, words circularizing uh good circularization and then we should deploy everything in a moment oh uh, i was coming over to the light side of was i not 
Anyway, um, going back to my, my last video, and I, I just can't thank you guys all enough. And if uh, this is going to be a shameless plug, that if you like the content that you're watching, please feel free to subscribe. I'm going to try to uh, make more stuff like this more often and just dumb things. Uh, I don't, this is my second video, so I don't really have a style yet, but I'm going kind of in the vein of uh, Reed Captain and Matt Lone. I don't know. Uh, here's the second rocket. I ended up making it just a little bit bigger. Added some more fuel tanks because I realized uh, I was only left with, I think it was like 106 Delta V on that last unit. Um, didn't want you guys to have to suffer through the watching it all circularize again. So here I am just fucking around with the, uh, the maneuver nodes to try to get it close. I end up cutting away and kind of just getting the two, two craft fairly close and then docked together. Uh, but please do remember that this is all just with, well, RCS, which I don't think is cheating, but also with that, that cub engine, which is not really meant for what we're doing here. So I just thought it was quite, quite the adventure, quite fun. So here we are deploying the aerial and the solar, and then eventually we get them pretty close together and I just end up using the, uh, the lone lazy method I turn on, I, I set the target and then turn on RCS and kind of let them just dock to each other. There you go. And then they I just slowly hit shift to kind of build momentum towards the other. I wanted to have them, this was a bit of, it was more for me, but I wanted to have them uh, connect in a hundred degree rotation from each other, meaning that one's solar panels are on the side of the aerial for the other. I just thought it looked really cool, but here we are, we're nice and docked. Um, I think I end up just kind of messing around with which way I should have it face to try to get the best solar, and then I cheekily have each one of the Kerbinauts come on out, and they switch craft whilst in orbit. Here we go, the Swapper Rooney, I think it's Jeb and, and Valentina. So they now board each other's previous vessels, their new homes back into, uh, back into orbit. And there we go, that's that's the mission done. This wasn't really even the idea for the mission that I had originally, I just wanted to make a rocket. This is really satisfying, I love that detachment right there. Um, and then, yeah, I just had the idea to make this rocket and I was like, why not mm, turn this into a Gemini, a Gemini docking mission? So here we are. Uh, I decide to keep these two locked in while they are entering the, uh, the atmosphere, um, just because I thought it was funny. It makes it a little easier instead of trying to watch them together. Uh, parachutes deploy, I end up undocking them, and I thought it was really funny if I could get them to undock and then redock, which we'll see in a moment, but that means we're coming to the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed this, I appreciate it. Uh, go ahead, give it a like, subscribe. I'm going to try to post more stuff like this. There's that dock. Just so satisfying. Anyway, thank you guys.